Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, A Tale from Thousand and One Nights. This story has been retold. Once upon a time, in a Persian city, there lived two brothers who loved each other very much and often visited each other. One was a merchant called Kasim, and the other was a woodcutter called Alibaba. One day, on his way to the forest with his three donkeys, Alibaba saw a cloud of dust in the distance. It was undoubtedly a large and possibly unfriendly group of horsemen because very few people passed along this road. Since he was afraid of being robbed, Alibaba looked for a hiding place. Not far away was a very high rock next to which stood a tall tree. Alibaba hid his donkeys, climbed into the tree, and waited. The cloud of dust quickly became bigger and soon the group arrived. There were 40 men, each carrying a big bag on his shoulders. The men jumped down from their horses and tied them next to the rock. Then the leader approached the rock and cried, Open sesame! To Alibaba's astonishment, a door opened in the rock face. The men disappeared into the cave and the door closed behind them. Alibaba stayed in his tree, not daring to climb down right away. While he was thinking what to do next, the door opened again. The men came out and the leader commanded the door. Close sesame! It rumbled shut. Then the men mounted their horses again and rode off. When they were far away, Alibaba climbed down from the tree, stood in front of the rock, and after hesitating for a time, he also cried, Open sesame! Once again, the rock face opened and Alibaba walked into a most amazing cave. There was enough light inside to see a collection of fabulous treasures, silk material, rich fabrics, carpets, and above all, bags overflowing with gold and silver. It was obviously the secret hideout of a group of robbers. After Alibaba had recovered from his astonishment, he gathered as much gold as his three donkeys could carry and closed the cave with the magic words. When he arrived home, he emptied his bags in front of his wife, who was dazzled by the gold. He then told her all about his adventure. We are rich, she cried dancing and clapping her hands. But how much exactly do we have? Enough to live in peace for the rest of our days, answered Alibaba. I want to be sure we must count it, his wife demanded. Alibaba did not see any reason for this, but he did not want to upset his wife, so he let her have her way. She immediately went to Kasim to ask him for a measuring cup. Kasim's wife opened the door. A measuring cup? she asked, astonished. Yes, the biggest one you have, replied Alibaba's wife. Kasim's wife lent her the cup, but she secretly stuck some candle wax on the bottom because she wanted to know what there was to measure at a poor woodcutter's house. When Alibaba's wife returned home, she began to scoop up the gold with a cup. She filled it once, twice, many times. A little while later, she returned the cup to her sister-in-law, but in her hurry, she did not notice that there was a gold piece stuck to the bottom. When Kasim came home, his wife said, Sit down here, I have something to tell you. What is it? asked Kasim. Kasim, do you think you're rich? she said. Enough to be happy, he replied. Well, Alibaba is a thousand times richer than you are said his wife. He has so much gold at home that he needs a measuring cup to count it. And she showed him the gold piece. Kasim, who was a bit jealous, went to his brother's house and said, Tell me, I beg you, how do you have so much gold at your house? Alibaba realized his secret had been discovered, and because he loved his brother, he told him everything, including the magic words to open the door to the thief's hideout. Kasim thanked him. Early the next morning, he set off with ten mules to find the rock. Open sesame! He cried when he reached it. The door opened. He went inside and the door closed behind him. For a moment, he was astonished by all the glittering treasure. Then he pulled himself together, 
and began to fill his bags. When they were full, he tried to leave the cave, but he couldn't remember the magic words. Open, ogre, he tried. The door stayed closed. He tried again and again. No matter what words he said, he could not think of the right one. So hours later, he was still locked in. As ill luck would have it, the thieves arrived at the cave. When they opened the magic door, Kasim took the chance to escape. He was caught immediately by the thieves who killed him on the spot and cut him up into four pieces. The next day, Alibaba came to the rock in search of his brother. To his horror, he discovered his brother's remains. Weeping with shock and grief, he put the four pieces that were left of his brother on the donkeys and returned home to Kasim's widow to tell her the dreadful news. Now, Kasim has a very clever servant whose name was Morjan. Morjan, we will have to cover up the true reason for Kasim's death, said Alibaba. Don't worry, I know how to handle that, she replied. The next day, the servant went several times to the chemist, pretending that her master had fallen ill. Each time she asked for stronger and stronger medicines, saying that he was going from bad to worse. The following day, no one was surprised, therefore, to hear that Kasim had died. Also in the city lived a very old, wise garment maker called Baba Mustafa. Morjan asked him to come to her in secret, bringing the tools of his trade. Baba Mustafa, who was suspicious, did not agree to do so unless he was given a large sum of money. He was then blindfolded and led into Kasim's room. There, Morjan took off the blindfold and asked him to sew her poor master's body back together. Baba Mustafa did so, and after he was finished, he was blindfolded again and taken home. In this way, Kasim had a dignified funeral, and no one was the least suspicious. Alibaba inherited his brother's house, as he liked that house better than his own. He moved in with his wife, and they lived together with Kasim's widow and Morjan the servant. In the meantime, the forty thieves had not forgotten the intruder in their cave. Someone else knows our secret, said the leader. The pile of gold is smaller. Who will go into the city to see what can be found out? One of the thieves volunteered and left early the next morning in disguise. He soon found Baba Mustafa's shop in which the old wise man was busy with his work. Good man, the thief said to the old man. How can you still see so clearly at your age? Eh, I can see that you are not from around here, said Baba Mustafa. My eyes are the best in the city. Why, not long ago, I sewed a dead man back together in a room much darker than this. Go on, where was that? asked the thief. I don't know. I was taken there blindfolded, replied Baba Mustafa. The thief held out a couple of gold pieces. Take me there. I told you I was blindfolded, said Baba Mustafa. Try to remember in which direction you were led pressed the thief. Baba Mustafa accepted the challenge and, as he had a good memory, they soon arrived in front of Kasim's house, which was now Alibaba's. The thief thanked Baba Mustafa, then he secretly made a cross with chalk on the door and went back into the forest. Shortly afterwards, Morjan discovered a mark. She assumed that this mark was not a good sign, so she took a piece of chalk of the same color and drew crosses on all the other doors in the neighborhood. That same night, the forty thieves sneak into the city. They looked for the door marked with a cross, intending to kill people who lived there. But when they found that every door had a cross, they left in great anger. The following day, the leader decided to take things into his own hands. He too found Baba Mustafa, who led him to Ali Baba's house. The leader examined it closely, and very soon he had an idea. When he got back to the forest, he sent his men to buy some mules and 40 leather oil jars. When everything had been bought, the leader filled one of the jars with oil, leaving others empty. Then he ordered all his men into the empty jars, which he then sealed, leaving just a little air hole in each lid. 
That night, he drove his strange convoy into the city. Alibaba was enjoying the cool night air when the leader of the thieves stopped outside, pretending that he was an oil merchant bound for market the following day. He said that he had come a long distance and was very tired. Alibaba did not recognize him at all. You are welcome here, Alibaba said. Come into my house and spend the night. The fake merchant put his jars in the courtyard under the window of the room where he would be staying. While Alibaba was out of earshot, the leader went to each jar and gave his orders. Can you hear me? When I throw a little stones out of the window, split the vases from the top to the bottom with your knives and get out. I will then tell you what to do. He went to bed early, keeping all his clothes on, ready for action. Meanwhile, Morgan was working in the kitchen when her oil lamp suddenly went out. Oh, what a time to run out of oil, she cried. Well, going to the courtyard, said Abdallah, another servant. There is a plenty of oil as long as the merchant is here. So Morgan took a jug and went outside. When she approached the first jar, she heard, Hey, is it time? That voice certainly came from the jar. Morgan, who was a quick thinker, realized the danger immediately and answered in a whisper, Not yet, but soon. She went to the other jars, hearing the same question and giving the same answer, until she found the old jar. First, she lit her lamp again, then she poured the oil from the last jar into a large copper pan, which she put on the stove until it boiled. Then, she poured boiling oil into each jar, killing all the thieves quickly and quietly. Later, the leader of the thieves threw the little stones out of his window. He was angry that there was no response. He went outside to wake up the thieves, but when he smelled the hot oil and leather, he thought it wiser to live quickly. The next morning, when Alibaba came back from the bathhouse, he was surprised to see the jar still in his courtyard. Morgan told him to open one of them, and when he saw what was in it, he jumped back in fright. Then, the servant told him how she had rescued him and his family. Alibaba realized that the men in the jars must be the thieves from the cave with the magic door. As a reward, he gave Morgan her freedom. He buried the bodies sold the mules, and carefully hid the weapons and the leather jars. However, although the leader of the thieves had run off, he was not that far away. He longed to take his revenge on the man who had invaded his horde and destroyed his gang. In a little while, he returned to the city, rented a shop, and became a cloth merchant, calling himself Kojia Hussein. He made his business to become very friendly with Ali Baba's son. He was extremely courteous to the young man and finally succeeded in being invited to his father's house. Alibaba invited his son's new friend to stay for a dinner, but the man refused. Why do you refuse? said Alibaba, surprised. It is because I can only eat food without salt, and this creates so much trouble for the people who invite me, said the phony merchant. That makes no difference to me, cried Alibaba. I can offer you a meal without salt. Come on, I beg you, do me the honor and stay. The man then accepted. Morgan was annoyed that she had to start all over again, preparing food without salt, but she did as she was asked. She thought the guest must be a very strange man to make such demand. Under the pretext of helping Abdallah, she served at the table so that she could have a look at the stranger. Morgan was more perceptive than Alibaba. She recognized the cruel leader of the thieves straight away, even though he was disguised as a cloth merchant. She saw the knife he was hiding under his clothes and devised a very bold plan. When they had eaten their dessert, she dressed herself up as a dancer, with a sword fixed to her belt as if it was part of the costume. Abdallah accompanied her playing the tambourine as it were part of the dance. Morgan drew the sword from its sheath. Alibaba was delighted. He let her dance for a long time, thinking to entertain his guest, who was actually waiting for the right moment to kill him. As was the custom, when the dance was over, 
Abdallah took the hollow tambourine to collect some money. Ali Baba threw in one gold piece, and the leader of the thieves took out his pouch to find one too. While he was fumbling in his pouch, Morjan thrust the sword deep into his heart. He died instantly. Once again, Morjan had uncovered the evil plot of the thieves' leader, and Ali Baba was determined to reward her richly. A few days later, a magnificent feast was held to celebrate the wedding of his son and Morjan. Ali Baba let an entire year pass by, then, as there appeared no reason to fear further reprisals, he mounted his horse and rode to the thieves' cave. He cried out loud the words, Open Sesame! The door opened, and Ali Baba found all the treasure as he had last seen it. Now, he was the only one who knew the secret. He loaded his horse with gold and returned home. At last, he called his son and told him of his adventures from beginning to end, including the magic words. And so this was how Ali Baba and his offspring passed the secret on from father to son. They lived in great splendor to the end of their days, and they were loved and honored by the entire city. The End Thank you for listening. Until next time, bye!